it happen today? What would you suggest to the viewers? Well, it's very difficult. I mean, what, what do you do? For one thing, you want to be out of uh, all risk assets. So you don't want to be in Sell equities. Sell everything. I think, I think, you know, if you can get out in time, and, and we've been, um, you know, we've been fairly negative on, on equities. We've been underweight equities for a long period right. of time. The few equities that we have got, we've been taking profits on. Mm. So I think, you know, you should be looking where the exit door is for equities and for any other risk assets. Property as well is also uh, quite highly correlated. I, I think what's going to be interesting, one of the, one of the opportunities that we might see is, you know, we've been saying for a while, below $1,400, gold is a reasonable buy. Mm. Um, but w if we get this kind of situation, if we get liquidity taken away, don't be surprised if gold falls in value, maybe 10, 15, perhaps even 20%. But there's going to come a point at which gold will then look like a, a really attractive buy because people will be panicking, there'll be fear globally. That's when gold actually looks like a really interesting buy. Trying to identify that, that entry point in advance is probably impossible, but just you know, look for gold to fall and just keep buying more and more mm. gold, I think, on those, uh, on mm. those dips. I think the other thing is um, fixed interest. If we look at sovereign bonds, you know, there's the, everybody's saying we're to somewhere towards the end of the period where sovereign bonds are, are a good investment. They've been a, a good investment for the last 20 to 30 years or so. Um, we are getting close to that, but in a, in a crisis, bonds will probably rally very strongly. Certainly, the uh, the most liquid, uh, and so you know, U.S. Uh, U.S. Treasuries. I think U.S. Treasuries would probably do very well in that environment. And mm. if you look at the yield that they're at today, round mm. about uh, at 2.3, 2.4, I think on the 10-year, then actually that's not a bad buying in point if you're if you're starting to get worried. Um, if if you're not starting to get worried, then you know they could actually go out further than that. And I I think uh, again, as we've said a few times before, what what we're seeing now is maybe a little bit of a, a foretaste. You, you know when you go to the cinema mm. and sometimes you see a kind of small sampler of all uh, the movies that are coming up? Right. Well, I, think, I think that's what we're seeing now. I think this is mm. kind of the trailer for what's going to happen when, uh, when stimulus gets taken away. Just people talking about stimulus getting taken away has caused risk assets to fall. It's caused risk currencies or pro-cyclical right. currencies to weaken. Everyone is agrees, agrees on you know, the fundamental of the Asia Pacific, well, I, I, I think I think there's two things. One, perhaps they the, 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 they've got a little expensive, but I think more to the point. Going back to your uh, your point earlier about tapering, if people believe that tapering uh, is going to happen or likely to start happening, that'll take some of the hot money out of the system, oh. and yeah, I, I guess that will certainly be affecting, maybe already affecting, and will continue to affect uh, investments in developing markets because you know that's where quite a lot of this hot money has found its way. Mm. But for a long-term investment, that would be the opportunity. For a long-term investment, I think it's an opportunity. But long-term is long-term. Uh, you know, you need to be thinking. <laughs> How much is long-term? <laughs> uh, well, I tend to work on a sort of uh, on a my shorter-term views are one to three years. Longer-term, <laughs> it would be three to five years. I, emerging markets have had a pretty difficult time since third quarter 2011. Uh, you know, we had we saw the boom really there in late 2009 and 10. Right. And. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of return there, so we've, we've, I've got, I think currencies have come under pressure as well in some of those economies, which hasn't helped. Do mm. you think it's overvalued? I think or most. Or just you know your short term. I uh, think most girlfriend. most risk assets, most risk assets, and in that I would include uh, not just equities, uh, but high yield debt, uh, sub investment grade emerging market debt, um, property REITs. I think most sectors, risk sectors, are uh, are overvalued, considering the economic fundamentals uh, as mm. they stand today and as the outlook is. Mm. So do you think that you know, the equity markets for you know, the last couple of years uh, is the liquidity driven? Uh, do you think it's, it's possible you know, to, to see one of them, I mean you know, the central banks, could you know, stop or at least you know, tapering the, you know, the QE, whatever that they call, yes, I think this year? Well, I, I think they would like to. Mm. Uh, I think central banks would like to uh, move away from a zero interest rate policy into a normalization of interest rates. I think they would like to stop money printing, quantitative easing, but I'm not sure they've got a choice because I think the consequences of tapering, this is the new phrase that's come out, the new <laughs> word, uh, right. or reducing quantitative easing, um, is, is probably highly risky and, and, and that uh, asset markets would, could easily fall back. Uh, 
one could see them certainly drifting back, they could fall back quite sharply if, if the markets felt that they were no longer going to receive the support mm. uh, of, of central banks because we come back down to economic fundamentals not being good. Right. Uh, we've got very low global growth. The GDP numbers have disappointed again and again right across the board from developing economies to emerge to, to developed economies. Uh, we're still seeing, um, we're seeing corporate revenues flat to falling. We're seeing corporate earnings leveling out now. Therefore, most of the uh, increase in equity markets over the last 18 months or so have just been a matter of PE expansion, not economic, not, not corporate earnings. The second half would be the opportunity to invest in equity markets. I think one needs to be very, very cautious. I think, uh, I think investors need to be, be patient. Uh, they've had a good time <laughs> over the last year, uh, course, yeah. uh, the year 18 months, um, since the beginning of last year. They've made profits. It'd be a good time to cash some of those profits in and just, just be patient and have a look and see what central banks do how things uh, work out over the next few months because I think it would be a dangerous time to invest just because we've had a little setback and it is only a very little setback in the developed economies um, mm. in, in markets uh, emerging markets I think I think again caution because because of currencies as well so we, we need to hold some cash and wait I think be patient I think I think what are we waiting for <laughs> We're waiting for an opportunity to buy at cheaper levels. Uh, certainly, that's what I'm to waiting more for. Uh, more more, yes, I, for. More charmly. Much more. Yes, I'd be looking for a for a, for, for a, a much more significant setback in uh, in the in valuations of, of risk assets before I'd want to buy um, equities in particular.